Yo, 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 what's up, Sooner fans? This is your host from the Prairie to the Pros, Jeremiah Hall, formerly number 27 on the field, but always number one in your hearts. Here with me today, you know who it is, my right-hand man, number nine on the field, the Braden Weight Room Willie Willis. And this is the podcast on the Prairie. Braden, what's up? Jeremiah, what's good? Bro, I just realized we're matching. We are. Yeah, we, we got the same, that chain that we got in San Antonio. That chain that you made mm-hmm. me pay way too much for in San Antonio. Do you have a, do you have a, what's that, a M, uh, what's that on it? You got a piece on there? Yeah, cross. I got this in San Antonio, though. Oh, yeah, that is right. See, I'm cheap, ladies and gentlemen. Jay Hall did not get a piece. I thought I was cool. I was like, yo, if it's shining, what I need a piece for? Like, I'm good. Very true. I think you're right. Yeah, I, I like it. You know, it compliments my head. You know, I, it, that shines. My <laughs> my necklace shines. So we're all good. Life is good. I can't complain. I do want to say I practiced the other day. We had the spitting image of you, but in a white man's body. Yeah. I mean, this man looked exactly like you. Just white. For I me. mean, exactly like you. And what his beard, doing? his beard was maybe like, like a gingerish, maybe a brown gingerish. But he looked just like you. And he had shades. I was like, that looks like Jay Hall with shades. New staff member? No, nah, just uh, I, we had a one, a couple practices. We had you know high school coaches there, like a ah. coaching convention or something like that. I think he was a coach or something. Uh, but yeah, he looked exactly like you. Someone came up to me. I think it was DP. DP was like, bro, he's like, why is Jay Hall here? And I looked over and I started <laughs> laughing. It was hilarious. But yeah, bro, he's like, literally looks just like you. Like, it was crazy. Bro, speaking of practice, and it's funny that you pointed that out in terms of like the high school coaches being there, because that's something I was going to bring up during the podcast. So it's practice. The two practices that I've been to, at least, it's been packed. Like, every single practice, y'all have an audience. Is that normal now? Like, that's just the thing? I'm not normal, but it's not not normal, if that makes yeah. sense. It's about 50-50. So, half the time, we'll have people there. Half the time, we won't. You know? It just depends. Like, for the first couple, the media was there. He wanted to open it up for the media. And then we've had some recruiting days. So, you know, there's been a lot of recruits. And that might have yeah. been one of the days that you were there. And then there was that little coaching convention. So, you know, I mean, we had uh, – I mean, the coaching thing, there was a lot of people – I mean, a lot of coaches there. Yeah. Like, maybe 200, 250. Like, it was a lot. Okay. Uh, it was, like, full staffs and stuff. And uh, shout out those coaches, bro. Like, there was a lot of times where I was – you know, we'd be doing individual drills or something. Like, I remember we were doing uh, tight end routes on air. And I caught a ball, and then I ran past a couple of the coaches. They're like, hey, man, love the pod. And I was like, oh, I didn't hey, know you listen to the pod. Hey. <laughs> so, you know, shout out, shout out to the coaches listening to the pod, man. You know, I had to say that. But that, that, was, that was pretty cool. Like, you just don't expect it from a high school coach or yeah. any other coach from that matter. You know what I'm saying? So that was pretty cool. Like, it wasn't yeah. just one, two. It was multiple. So that was, no, that was cool. good stuff. I'll come back to practice later on. Uh, first, sure, I, sure. I want to ask you about your weekend. But before I get to that, um, adding on to people asking about the pod and, and that type of deal. When I went to the airport um, to fly back home to Charlotte the other day for the Panthers Pro Day. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if I said this on the on the last podcast, but I flew back home to Charlotte. I had a local pro day um, that went well. I had a good time. Um, matter of fact, I'm wearing a little Panther shirt right now. So who knows? I might be a hometown hero. But I uh, went to the airport and I think I had like I was on the phone for a bit, about half an hour. And within that half an hour, and I was wearing the our nine by 27 hoodies, which uh, might make an appearance in the future. We'll see, by the way. But um, and I had like six people come up and say, hey, like I love the pod. So I appreciate you guys um, supporting the podcast. You know, I I love when people come and talk about the podcast rather than football itself. And um, also, speaking of our high school coaches, after our last podcast, you know, our free game segment and um, us sharing a little bit about our faith um, with Grace as well, um, I got a lot of positive responses off of that. Um, And and that made me feel good. 
you know, I know Braden probably did as well. And uh, we, we, we respect that because the more that we're ourselves on the podcast, the more positive feedback we've received. So we'll continue that in bits and pieces. Um, we got a free game segment later on in the podcast. So stay tuned. Appreciate you guys for the support. Um, but Braden, back to yep. your weekend. Anything new? Anything uh anything pop off? Um, this weekend, actually for the next two weekends, I have one of my uh hometown friends come coming up. He's actually doing he's working out here. So I'm gonna plug my boy in. All right. So Sooner Nation. If you are in the OKC area or Edmond area or more, okay, and you need solar or you need security systems, hit my boy. You can get in contact through him through me, or I'll just, you know, shout his IG or something. I don't know. But yeah, he's gonna be up here this he was there, he was up here last weekend. He's gonna be up here this weekend because he's uh selling, you know, solar and security and apparently Oklahoma is a uh, untapped market when it comes to uh, Vivint because they only have one team up here and it's like super hard to sell up here or something like that. And now they have the green light to sell. So he came up here this weekend and uh, it was working. But on Saturday night, we got to go out a little bit and, you know, just enjoy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just kick it and uh, just enjoy each other's company and everything like that, man. So it was pretty cool. Uh, he had just came from the city, so we didn't go to the city. We just went to Norman. But he's already been up here before, so we've already went to the city. So he wanted to experience something new. So I just took him to the corner, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Let him vibe out on the corner. He paid you, uh, pay you to give him a shout out? No, 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 no. That's my okay. dog, man. You know, I'm a, I'm a man <laughs> of the people. Come on, now. I'm a man <laughs> of the people. I, I, I put my people on, you know what I'm saying? It'd be the same thing if it was you. I yeah. put you on. True. I respect it. You know what it. I'm saying? I put my people on. Matter of fact, let me plug myself real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, um, from 12 to 2, around 2.30, I will be signing autographs and selling OU practice-worn and game-worn gear on the corner. So come find me. I'm not going to charge you an arm and a leg. I'm not trying to become a millionaire off of this. I'm just trying to get give away some of my stuff, um, make some of y'all smile, and take pictures and sign autographs. So uh, pull up. Uh, prices are somewhat negotiable. Um, there's going to be a little extra if you want to sign because I, I got to charge for that now. My marketing agent or whatever, she says I, I can't be signing stuff free no more. If it was up to me, I'd make everything free. But um, anyways, yeah, pull up on the corner. After the corner, uh, we are going to have a live episode at Rudy's. I'm going to say this again at the end, but it will be after the spring game around 7, I think. Brandon, you think that's enough time for me to for you to like chill, see your people, and get over there? Yeah, I mean they'll probably be there in attendance anyway, so you know. Okay. Yeah. All right. I didn't want to make it too late, so I was like battling between seven or seven thirty. No, nah, seven's cool. I think seven's good. All right. Cool. Give enough so, people enough time to you know go eat and relax yeah. a little bit and then come back. You know, it's not too late from a spring game, so they you know don't feel the need to go home or anything. So. All right. That's cool. That also gives Danny enough, Danny's dad enough time to go buy us a bottle of Crown and then get over to Rudy's as well. So. That. <laughs> That's cool. I'm glad you had a good weekend, though. Um, this past weekend, I went to go see Morbius with my mom. It's uh, one of oh, the really? yeah, Marvel superheroes. Great mm -hmm. movie. If you haven't seen it, go see it. If you're not into Marvel, I don't know what you're doing with your life. I'm not really a DC person. No, I fall asleep with every Batman that I that I go see. Like don't ask me about Batman. But I do I do love all the Marvel movies. Huge Avengers fan. So mm -hmm. um had a yeah, good time with mom. Um it seemed like every time we did something she was just emotional because every time bro she was just like I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> oh mothers man. I I'm, I'm like mom relax like I'm not going anywhere. She's like I don't know you're just not around as much. I'm so emotional. So <laughs> Yeah, my mom. Got a little the moms. Got a little yeah. moms. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so um, another thing I saw on Twitter this weekend, Sports Illustrated, I think it was, uh, one of the backup QBs at USC. Uh, normally, I don't want to talk about USC or Lincoln, but I thought this was crazy funny. But um, he said, the backup QB, he said, I felt like there's Lincoln Riley is giving us an equal opportunity at quarterback. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, I, hey, hey, I love my man's confidence though. Like I, I, I think I respect it. I, yeah, like I said, I respect it. <laughs> I respect it, but I don't. That take is a little bit of a cold one. Yeah, I don't know if there's many. Should say so myself. Yeah. Um, good luck to the backup QB. I wish him all the best. Uh, um, yeah, it's been a difficult take. Yeah. But yeah, like you said, hey, good luck to him. Hey. Yeah. Um. Oh, one, one more thing. One more thing. Um. I know I clown around a lot about uh me and even Braden seeing these uh seeing these seeing these ladies and all this stuff on campus. And but bro, one one of the moms that listened to our podcast, I, I didn't get her name, but she reached out to her daughter and said that Jay Hall has been rejected a couple of times. You should you should slide into his DMs and Sure enough, my girl, I'm, I'm not going to say her last name, but sure enough, my girl Kennedy did, boy. She slid and slid quick. And where, where is it at? Here, I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pull it up. Um, Here, I'm going to tell you what she said. She right. said, my mom listened to the pod and told me you're looking for a girl to slide in your DMs. And I said, hey, she, I said, hey shoot or shoot, huh? Tell your mom I appreciate her listening. And she said, ha ha, she said she's a big fan, LOL, but do you appreciate my DM?" I was like, okay, you brought it back to yourself quick. I was low-key trying to duck the DM, but... <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Hey, this so... This one, they don't want to shoot now. Now you hey, look, and that, look. Hey, you know, I'm I'm in a transition point in my life right now, so I, I don't want her to get caught up in the mix. You know what I'm saying? Fair I enough. I respect her enough to reject her. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, yeah. So, uh, shout out to my girl Kennedy. I also um, got a, a DM this uh, weekend. If you want to hear about it. Oh, okay. Um, let's see if is I it know. is it PG? Can we talk about it? Yeah, it's PG. Okay. It's PG. Yeah. Okay. I don't want Alex to get onto us or anything. <laughs> oh, classic throwing Alex to be the bad guy. <laughs> Uh oh wait, I gotta find it. I deleted it. So you still looking for that DM? You you must have a lot to go through, huh? <laughs> oh wow. Nah, not too much, not too much, you know what I'm saying? But I uh -huh. did find it though. I did you find it? it. So you know what okay. I'm saying? I only got a couple. I mean, if that. Uh, but I will say, so this woman, I don't know uh if I said it on the pod earlier or at one point about a sugar mama or something. Oh. I'm pretty sure I didn't. But this girl slid into my DMs and said, I'd be your sugar mom, LMAO, with hard eyes and like the little crying emoji. And then me being who I am, I just sent my cash up. Bro, so you didn't say anything? You just sent your cash up? That's it. Just the cash up. Bro. And it wasn't taken too kindly because uh, it was seen and yeah, no, nothing else. I think she'll follow me after that, actually. So, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, dang. I respect it. Hey, real quick, we, we got to touch on this. This is a we, – we switching gears here. This is a sad mm -hmm. moment in sports history, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know, um, Dwayne Haskins passed away over the past week. Um, crazy incident. Um, was hit by a truck. I think he was helping somebody on the side of the road or walking or something under that nature but um crazy crazy incident it just goes to show how how short life can be you know i i feel like sometimes you get so caught up my mom reminded me of this um she was like you know jeremiah sometimes i feel like you get so caught up in, in what you're doing like you're always going to go see people you're always you know going here and, and going to go work out like you're rarely home and and that type of deal which isn't bad but uh just to make sure that you know you you enjoy your day-to-day -day. you know I, I i make fun of my mom because of how emotional she was and me being back and th this and that but i think she really understands how valuable life is more more than i do and so that's just something i wanted to touch on real quick um i didn't know Dwayne haskins personally um, all I knew him was as 
to me was was a great athlete you know a great competitor i heard nothing about good th- but good things about him you know especially his time at ohio state and in the nfl so uh Brandon, i don't know if you have anything to add on that but i just wanted to want to touch on it for a little bit yeah, it's just more of the same, man. Extremely sad situation, man. Like you said, you never win it, know when it's going to be your time. So make sure, you know, you tell your loved ones you love them every day and just, you know, live life with no regrets, man. You know, like I said, that's like I was talking to my mom about the situation. It's just the craziest situation, man. And the kid just he's just so young. I just said, told my mom, I mean, he's what, two years, two, two, three years older than us. So, I mean, it's just. It's extremely sad, but um, prayers for his family and condolences for his family and uh, and for Buckeye Nation and for uh, uh, Pittsburgh Nation. And, uh, yeah, this is very sad. But, yeah, I think it was – I think it was 24. Shoot, I'm 23. You know, you're, what, 22? So, 22. Yeah, uh, life goes by quick. But um, for our fans, no need to – didn't want to change the mood too much. Uh, we're all about positivity here on the pod. Um, I just wanted to make yeah. sure that we acknowledged it because uh, it is important. But moving on to uh, the, the next quick segment, Braden, can you update us on anything related to Sooner football? I know I was at the scrimmage the other day uh, right there at the beginning, and I started off kind of slow, but uh, then I see on Twitter later on that day that you're out here making back shoulder catches in the end zone. So. Obviously, it it went kind of well, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, I just in, before I touch on that, just in terms of the whole team, man, uh, we're 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 picking stuff up really fast. You know, the coaches put a lot on us, but I wouldn't rather it any other way. There's a lot for our offense to learn, a lot for our defense to learn, but uh, we're we're picking it up really well, and uh, we're starting to play really well on both sides of the ball. And, you know, to your point, sometimes it is a little slow, but it's not slow because we're doing bad. It's slow because there's actually really good competition. And that's one of the biggest things that I've noticed from this team is that there's really back and forth competition. There is no dominance in a day or, you know, I'm saying like there one drill will go this way, like short yardage may go this way and uh, third downs may go this way and then. Yeah, red zone knockout might go another way. So it's really back and forth, which is encouraging because that's what you want to do. Coach said, Coach said at the after the scrimmage, he said, if I'm not mad at both sides of the, if I'm not mad at both sides of the ball, there's a problem because that means one side of the ball dominated, and that means one side's really good and the other side's really bad. You know what I'm saying? I like so, how you, I like how you just said that in terms of the going back and forth because you are right when I say slow. You know, I'm so used to the offense dominating and running up and down the field, especially in Lincoln Riley's offense, that you're you're actually right. I'm sitting here thinking about it. I do have to get used to both sides being great, you know, the the back and forth, especially here going into the NFL, you know. most I think uh, somebody told me a while ago that the average difference per game in the NFL in score is four points, like a little over four points, like 4.2, yeah. 4.1. Like the average win difference – is less than a touchdown. So uh, I'm I'm glad that you said that because I'm sitting over here thinking like, you know what? He's right. I might need to change my mindset. I'll put my pride to the side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but it's been really good. But uh, yeah, I had a little, you know, actually that, that scrimmage day was really good for me, you know, not to toot my own horn. I had a, I had a pretty solid day. Yeah. Um, you know, the catch that somehow went viral. I mean, I, I didn't know that they captured that on film or anything. I just, you know what I'm saying? I had no, for some reason, when I would go back and I look at the film, the photographer's right in the corner of the end zone, like broad, you know, yeah. broad as day, but like I had no clue he was there. Um, and so I, I come home, I watch a little bit of film, see what I could have did better after, you know, uh, eating and treatment. And then I go to sleep. I usually take a little, little power nap before my class that I could be attentive in class and everything like that. And I wake up and, Phone's kind of blowing up a little bit. I'm like, what is, what's going on? I check Twitter and I see the video. I'm like, oh, okay. And I was like, it's funny because on the field, everybody thought I was out until the ref said that I was in. And even the defense was so mad. They were all like, nah, he was out. And I was like, nah, bro. I was in. I know. Oh, I was, was definitely in. I was definitely in. So 
Uh, yeah, it was, it was nice little, you know, but I mean, I just did what I was supposed to do. Who really deserves the credit was DG because, boy, yeah. that was a ball. That was a dom. That was a ball right there. I mean. That was a dom, yes. You couldn't have placed it any better. And uh, does it on a you know, consistent basis. It don't really shock me no more. But I realized that, you know, Sooner Nation is not at every practice or whatever the case would be. So they're like, oh, my God, like. But yeah. yeah, it does does it with consistency. So it don't shock me. I'm used to it, but that was a that was a dime, like you said, dime time. You know what I you know what I will say? What'd you say? We gotta get you a touchdown celebration package. <laughs> Cause I'm I, bro, <laughs> I'm predicting for you, like I know you're gonna go out there and play regardless, but I'm predicting uh-huh. for you like seven plus touchdowns on the season, at least, at minimum. Hey, that's music to my ears right there. If, I wouldn't be mad If I at had all. to take a guess, if I had to take a guess, mm-hmm. I'd probably say 11. Ooh, now we talking. Now we talking. I got I yeah. to gotta make you right. I will say, though, I feel extremely confident this season, man. But the thing is, like, the, the thing is that I am going into this season with a humble mentality and also just a work mentality. Like I'm not really like going into the season, like, Oh man, I'm about to do this, 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 this. I feel really good about the season, man. It's the best I felt about the season, you know, but at the end of the day, man, I'm excited to go into season with this team, with this coaching staff and, you know, whatever happens is going to happen after that. But I'm just really excited to get out there, man. It's been, uh, it's been fun, man. It's been really, really, really fun. So Yeah. Now, I will say if there's any piece of advice that I could give you because I was in your position last year, it's just it, it, you just said it. Like, you took the words out of your, out of my mouth. It's going to come. Like, go out, don't right. go out there forcing it, trying to, you know, do this and do that. Like, it is going to come. Like, it's, you can recall, like, I didn't even start last year. Man, I was, like, number right. three. But every right. time I got in, I just took advantage of my opportunities. Like, I'm pretty sure you remember sure. Joe John saying, like, I had the least amount of plays, but the most amount of yards. And I was leading touchdowns for a while, too. So for sure. it, it, it's going it's going to come. You know, you've you've done the work. You you've you've lifted your prayers. I'm pretty sure your family's praying over you and sure. uh, God's going to take care of the rest. And so I know you'll 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 shine. So. No um, doubt, no doubt. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all we got for this segment of the pod. Coming up next, we got our guy, Perry on Winfrey. All right, now, Sooner fans, it took me about three weeks to get this man on the podcast. Y'all have been DMing me ever since I don't even know when. Uh, we finally got him, though, number eight on the field, coming in at about 6'4", uh, 320 pounds because he always overweight and all this other stuff. But, uh, nah, I'm just playing with you. We love him. Welcome to the podcast, Perion Winfrey, my brother. What's up with you? What's the word, man? I appreciate y'all having me on here. Oh, man. Bro. I see you're going to be laughing. The whole time. Thank you for answering my text today. No, nah, no I problem. I appreciate you. I had just I woke up, so. No. I don't know if you've it been watching the blessing. other. I don't know if you've been watching the other episodes, but I low-key been, like, putting you on blast. So. Wow. It don't surprise me. Loki. You're a goof, bro. Hey, nah, but for real, man, how's uh how's life? Like I know you 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 went off at the senior bowl, so I, I know you got some visits and all that. I know you've been a busy man. What's it what's been going on? Most definitely, yeah. Life is crazy right now. I can't go into details on who the teams are, but I definitely have to um seven visits so far and I got ten. I got three more coming up before um the spring game because I'm actually going to the spring game. So I'm just, you know, trying to stay healthy and stay working out while also trying to go on these visits and be in all these zooms at the same time. So life is hectic, but it's what I pray for, so it's worth it in the end. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good stuff, bro. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and just give you your flowers right now, man. I, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of of the person that you've become and uh the influence that you've made here in norman bro because i remember I, I was i was right there at the senior bowl with you bro I, after the game i'll see with you on the bus bro and i Real i was talk. right there bro all your family was calling bro your mom like yeah. crying on the phone bro you telling all these people I you're swear. calling back 
bro. Braden, like this, I don't know if I told you, bro, but this man's phone was blowing up, bro. I didn't even know this. You know, like, you know, like, as a guy watching it and as your teammate and everything, it's hard for me not to want to text you I mean, in that moment. But then I'm like, yeah, I ain't going to lie. I already know his phone going crazy, so I'm just going to let him have it. I'll hit him when he come back or something. Come you know on, though. My fault. It's probably still messages I haven't seen from the single book. To be honest. What was that like, bro? What, what was you know. feeling? I know you was talking to your mom after the game. What, what was what was right. that moment like? To be honest, it was just a sigh of relief because I had just been preparing for this moment because I feel like I didn't have the season that I wanted to have. So in order to get myself back to where I needed, know that I needed to be, I had to have a great single book. So it was just a sigh of relief that I did the preparation that I – finally succeeded as what I wanted to do. So it was just really just a sigh of relief, just me knowing that I was able to accomplish my goals and that it was just one less thing that I had to worry about throughout the process. But I didn't know it was going to go as crazy as it went. I had no plans on winning MVP. I just wrote down in my binder when the lineman of the week. But I guess the Lord had other plans, and he told me to start dreaming big, so. Yeah. Yes, sir. I love yes, that. sir. I, I like that you that? said that, bro. I can, I can definitely also relate to the sigh of relief because I, I felt the same way after the senior bowl because I was I was kind of yeah. stressed out, bro. Because you know you kind of want to just take advantage of every opportunity that you get. No, so, <laughs> but it was worth nah, that, the end. If, I could definitely say it's like for any senior or like any fifth year or somebody that's has the option of going to the senior bowl, go because you have more options than. Like somebody that's not getting the chance to go to Singer Bowl because all 32 teams talking to you first. All 32 teams yep. watching you practice mm-hmm. three days and play a game. So you have the upper hand on all the underclassmen. So if you got the chance to go to Singer Bowl, go. And then Jim Nagy going to shout you out almost a whole couple of months after the Singer Every Bowl. Every day. Promoting you yeah. to NFL scouts. Like he's plugged in. He used to be an NFL scout and he got Super Bowl rings. So he well known in the business for sure. Yeah, Braden well on his way to make that thing happen, boy. So, next man up. Yes, next man up. He so, got to. No, for so sure. Might as well go win MVP, so. man. <laughs> I know. No, I'm saying I got big shoes to fill, but real I got to do it, man. Somebody got to do no, it. No, for hey, real. Bro. So, you came from JUCO to – Oh, you. So first, shed light on what it was like in JUCO. You know, we don't have many people. I don't think we've had anybody on the podcast that's come from JUCO. So what was that experience like? It was treacherous. And I knew it was going to be treacherous because when my dad and my little brother dropped me off on day one, when they was about to get in the car, I was crying, crying. My my eyes are just knowing that that was this going to be the first time that I was ever going to be away from my family going into my freshman year. And then not only away from my family, away from all my friends, having to make new friends. And then I'm out in the middle of nowhere. But I adapted quick because I had um, a couple homies that I went to high school with, ended up going to the junior college. But some things that I could say were difficult was probably just not becoming a product of my environment. I wouldn't say it was difficult, but it was hard to cut off friends that I was close to. But then I started to realize that they weren't trying to go the same way as me. So basically in JUCO, I was just really isolated and just trying to focus on myself and just get to the next level and then I I guess I focused enough because when I left JUCO I was the number one junior college player in the nation so I guess I did what I needed to do to get myself prepared for the next level no nah, that's good stuff it's good. crazy that you said that about the people because on my last episode I talked about the paralyzed man in the bible I don't know if you're familiar with him but um, a man was paralyzed and he had to have four other people lift his mat and take him to Jesus right. for him to be healed. And so it just made me think right. about, you know, the people that you surround yourself with are sometimes the people that are either going to hurt you or help you. And so it's the same thing at Duco. And um, there's a similar thing here at Oklahoma, except the people around here are better. Most and, you know, they put you on a, a higher too. platform. So when you got to – well, first, why did you choose Oklahoma? And second, when you got to Oklahoma, what was – the biggest difference between OU and JUCO? Right. So, like I said, I was highly recruited after my first season at o, um, at the junior college. I could have went to, like, a Bama, a Georgia, a LSU, something like that. But, like, I seen OU as an opportunity to not only make a name for myself, but to help the team. Like, I seen that the offense was already great. I see, We had been in the college football playoffs many times. 
and we had only we had only needed a couple more pieces to get over the hump. And I feel like the pieces were needed on defense. Like I feel like it wasn't nothing that was needed on offense. It was all defensive pieces. So I feel like I could come in and not only change the culture but change the game because. Before I went there, they were ranked 126th in defense. And then after my first season, we was ranked top 10. So that's some of the stuff I was trying to do, really just change the culture, bring back that smash my football that OU was known about and just win rings. Yes, sir. Uh, speaking on that, hold on, Jake. Speaking on that, boy, you would have loved to play in this defense, boy. I'm, I'm telling hard. you. Man. I'm telling you. Real talk. I was really just talking with – uh. We was just talking with uh, JB and uh, Trouble the other day. Yeah. You know, Trouble's my roommate. But um, we were talking, and we were like, boy, if we just got the squad back together for another one. Obviously, you know, some people couldn't have came back. Like, Jay right. Hall, that was his last yeah. go around. But, right. like, the people that could have came back, we was like, boy, if we could have just got the squad back together, boy, y'all would have loved playing in that defense. Nah, man. it would have been ugly for sure. I, 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 I wouldn't have seen us losing the game especially the way that we was able all, to play man. the defense. Like, this is the defense that I wanted to be in all along. Like, this is how OU is supposed to look, how OU was supposed to be. I, I don't know the word, but, like, this is what I came to OU for. Like, this is how I envisioned it looking like. Like, the way Venables has it no, set up. for the sure. Ladies, coaching the team, how he got everybody, like, militant soldiers really dedicated to their crowd. That's what I came to OU for, most definitely. For sure. Aaron, have you talked to Venables one on one? Yeah, most yeah. I didn't I didn't talk to Venables many times. That's my guy. Like it's crazy because like he's giving me all this motivation and all these tips and tools, but like he's never met me, never recruited me, never known me before he came here. So the fact that he's able to speak good things into my life and just continue to make sure that my faith faith is strong with the Lord, I just can't thank him enough because he don't, like I said before, he don't know me at all. So like that one day when we were all, when we all came back and he all oh, yeah. had us in that circle and we talked for like yes. 10 minutes, like that's something that I, I would never see from a man. So that's how I know he's genuine and the love that he has for his players, even if they're not his players, the love that he has for OU and the OU brand and the OU brotherhood is real. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and I was telling Braden about that um, right. just for the fans. This was the day before pro day, and Braden right. and the rest of the team had just finished practicing, and he had talked to all the guys that going to that were going to participate in pro day, and I was just sitting there listening right. to him like, man, this dude is the truth. Like, yeah. where 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 they get this dude from? Like, what? Really dropping knowledge, like, and I know he's well respected because like on every visit I go to, they're like, yeah, y'all got a good one, Venables man. Like, y'all y'all finally got what y'all needed to get over the hump, and I could tell that like he just. An uncommon man, <laughs> really. Yeah, to be honest, yeah, really though. I'm glad really. that you mentioned um, that he was a man of faith too, because that's always the first thing that right. comes across to me. And he does yeah. that like every single yeah. practice, like yeah, every practice. Every practice Biggest every man of faith is like, really he incorporating the Lord and everything. Everything people he... got to realize that like nothing this, nothing that I have would be possible without the Lord. Nothing that y'all have, I wouldn't be able to walk, breathe, or nothing without him. So the fact that he's incorporating that team, that's already putting them over the hump more than anything. Exactly. I agree. Perion, getting back to you, was there a moment that you realized that you knew that you were ready to declare for the draft? Um, To be honest, I knew after my first season that I could have declared and had, I had a good grade already. But I came back for that ring, bro. Like, I came back because, honestly, I didn't want to leave my brothers yet. I didn't – I was ready for the NFL, but I wasn't ready to leave the homies. And, like, just – because the, the camaraderie in the NFL is way different from the camaraderie in college. Like, you're almost with these guys for three, four years. Like, in the NFL, you could be with somebody one day, and the next day they're gone, Walker gone. Never see yeah. from them again. So, like, brotherhood in college football is way different. So, really, I just wanted to stay – and win a ring and just stay with my brothers. But I knew after my first year that I was ready for the league, to be honest with you. For sure. Hey, brother, I don't know if this is going to happen, but I honestly wish, I hope that we end up on the same team because I'm not trying to get hit Real by talk. you. Like you got hit, like like, <laughs> like you hit Brock, it's crazy. Brock Purdy, bro. I'm not trying to do that. Like I'm not, if I, <laughs> the way you hit Brock, bro, if I see you on the field, I'm not cutting back. Like. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. Can't I'm trying to hit Tom Brady the same way. 
He my idol, but man, like I'm coming into the I'm coming into the league with the same aggression. Like on that play, when I seen Brock Purdy, it was like all them sacks that I missed in the Big Twelve just flashed before my eyes, and I just remembered what I just, he did, did. And how he made me look so weak. Just running and every every stack just flashed before my eyes. And when I finally got to him, I tried to take his soul out of his body. I was just, when I got up, I was really upset because he didn't fumble the ball. Like nobody knows that, but my dad for real. Like I came home, he was like, "Good hit." I'm like, "Yeah, it was cool, but like, he didn't fumble." I wanted him to fumble. That would have been it. Was, it's still dope as hell. Like, that would have been even crazy if I was able to do Bro. that. I feel like that's gonna be a play that I talk to my grandkids about. Like, <laughs> real talk. That's that's not. Nah, it's just it's just beautiful because I did that because I feel like I didn't have the season that I wanted to, and I always wanted to be like known at OU or making a historic play. And I feel like that's one of the plays that's all gonna always be talked about and always be shown on videos and stuff like that. Either that or that field goal block. One of the two. Yeah, bro, man. Hearing you talk. And just thinking back on those good times, bro, I'm gonna miss it so much. Yeah. Sheesh, I want to do things. I, I pray that I, I, I'm with, on the team with at least one of my teammates. But like, there, that's one of the questions organizations are asking. Like, if you could bring one teammate with you, who would you bring? And I feel like they're asking that question because they're trying to bring more camaraderie between the locker rooms in the NFL. That's why you see the Jamar Chases and the Joe Burrows together, or the. Yeah. models and the tools like they're trying to bring guys together so they can make that hall of fame squad for real for real no nah, i ain't even because they seen yeah, it they sure. that. yeah they asked me that question Who? too i didn't even think about that that's a good yeah that's, that's good why they question. asking that i say brian I every time <laughs> i say brian <laughs> every time it's like we played on defense nah. together so like and then we were at the senior bowl together and whenever yeah. he's my roommate or close to me, like for some reason I do good stuff on the field. Like, cause we used to, people didn't know, like the first season we used to be, um, like our rooms used to be next to each other on the away games. And then you no, know, on the away games, we used to like try to get each other, get other guys on the team's key card. So our rooms could line up to each other. And then on home games, uh, we used to already be next to each other until that, um, OSU mayhem went down. <laughs> Man. Hey. Yeah. Before, before that, hey. we were next to each other. Seven. Hey, speaking of the OSU mayhem, right? Now, nah, you, you know what I'm about to ask you next. Yeah. You, 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 know it's, you know it's coming next. So, you were very out about, you know, Coach Riley leaving and all that. Can you... Can you just talk about where you were coming from and, and, and what all you were thinking? Like about the whole honest, situation just, in general. It was just coming from the heart. Like I wasn't mad that he that he left. I was mad at the fact that he had told us the day before that he wasn't leaving. I wasn't mad that he yeah. just left. I was I'm mad at how he did it. Like it, it wasn't really so far him feeding his family. It was just the fact that he had told us he wasn't leaving. Me myself personally sent the group chat with all the seniors in it, like. We trying to run it back, coach. And um, he said yep. he, he just loved it and said something like, I love y'all boys. And then the next day he was gone. So, like, it felt like, damn, like, did you really mean what you said? But, like, I have no bad will to him. I'm glad that he's doing good at USC. And I know they boys going to be great over there just because they got Link. And he did get yeah. braided from OU DNA. So, anything that he does – will have OU's name on it because we are who made him who he is. So, like, I have no complaints or nothing bad to say about him. That's still going to be my yeah. guy. I text him the um, – no, nah, I'm not going to say what I text him the other day. But, yeah, <laughs> that's my guy. <laughs> that's my guy, for sure. Understood. Understood. No, I, I feel you. Me and, me and Braden kind of felt a similar similar way, or at least this is how I felt. Yeah. You know, I felt I, – I wasn't yeah. mad about – him leaving, you know, he gave me my offer. Like, I was a little low three-star out of North Carolina. Only reason I got my offer was because he was at East Carolina before. So, you know, right. I, he, he kind of saved me in a way. But right. I, I felt similar. He saved me. That's why, that's why I can't be mad at him either. Like, in a sense, Lincoln Riley saved Same my me. life. So, like, I never – I could never, like, talk bad on his name because, like, there's a million times when he could have gave up on me or – just said he didn't want me no more, but like he just stuck with me throughout everything. Like I, mm -hmm. I will forever have respect for that man. 
Real talk. Yeah, it's, same man, here. It's just the way that he's Same here. It. I mean, I was I like, like Jay Hall. People, people learn, like, as they get older, and he learned, like, that he didn't do things the right way. I know that he still – because he's even – he wishes that he did things um, another way, but – you learn, you live, and you learn. So, like, that's just something that he learned. It's just something that he get better at if he plans on leaving USC as well. Yeah. Yeah, for okay. sure. I, uh, yeah, like you said, I, I don't even got anything else to add. That's, I feel the exact same way. So, P, my, la- my last question. Um, so, you didn't play in the Alamo Bowl, right? And I don't mm-hmm. think many people – understand why players yeah. do play and why players don't play. I right. personally decided to play, and that was my own choice. Yeah. So would you like to explain right. to the fans why you didn't play? So number one, yeah, I didn't play in the game, but I was at the game in the sidelines. And when DeMarco Murray yeah. found out, he was hot because not hot that I didn't play, hot that I wasn't on the sideline with the players. And I just told him, like, it was their time to shine. Like, I didn't want to get in their way or crap their style. But the reason why I didn't play the game was there was, like, too many what-ifs. Like, we didn't know the coaches were coming back. We didn't – people were telling me we were going to be playing the game with just Bob Stoops and a bunch of GAs. So it was just, like, too many what-ifs. So I'm like, forget all these what-ifs. Let me just stop doing all this stuff and just begin to get my body right and get ready for combine training in the senior bowl because I had already knew in the back of my head that I didn't have the season that I wanted to have. So I need to get in the head of the eight ball and start watching film of the senior bowl and getting ready to sprint and stuff like that. And then in addition to that, like, I feel like my brothers wasn't getting the playing time that they needed to get the whole year. So I wanted to give them, like, an option and a chance to – because they were still going to be playing collegiate football, and I feel like anything that I needed to, left to do was going to be in these next couple of steps of the process. So I thought it was best for me to just take a step back and just let the younger generation, all the younger guys under me, go ahead and do what they needed to do to make a couple of plays and hopefully blow up in a game like that, like – I just didn't want to take anything away from my brother because mm-hmm. I knew they were going to have a chance to let that game spring them into a great next season. So I knew that basically I was just trying to put the guys on, to be honest with you. Yeah. No, I, I, I you know. I, I, oh, well, no, you Jay. got it. You got it. Oh, so I was just saying I'm glad you brought up that point, uh, yeah. P, because the crazy thing is, I mean, I understand what some people say. You know what I'm saying? Like, in certain stances, some people do have a point. But right. what people don't understand is as football players, after you go through a whole football season, man, you are beat up. Man. You know what I'm saying? And, like, we've, we're fighting through a lot of stuff that people don't even know about. Right. Like, I don't know to this day if people still uh, – I don't know if to this day if people knew that during the OK State game, I played with a whole tour in right. MCL. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like when you go into situations like that, it's like, one, what if that happens to you in that yeah. game? You know what I'm saying? Two, one of the biggest reasons why I came back, like, yes, I definitely took my time to, you know what I'm saying, get my grade and talk to scouts and talk yeah. to the new coaches and everything. But the biggest thing was I'm going – I'm looking at, you know, my grade, and I'm like, hey, it's not bad. Mm-hmm. But you know what I'm saying? How can I improve that? Well, I got to test really well. Am I going to test really well with the the MCL that I have? Nah, you know what I'm saying? Right. So people got to understand that. Like, that was a, a big reason why, another big reason why I came back. So yeah. people got to understand that, one, your body's beat up after a long season. Man. Two, injuries are inevitable in football. So, you know what I'm saying? There's always a risk of an injury. And that's just, you know what I'm saying? Like, I at the end of the day, I you got to feel what you're saying. Because, like, like you said, you was injured at the OK State game. Many people don't know. On Thursday's practice at the Senior Bowl, I tore my owner ligament in my thumb, but I didn't tell anybody. And then I go to the game. Well, on Friday, the trainers did a little bit to, like, put the swelling down. Then I go into the game on Saturday, and I make the first tackle of the game. And then when I come to the sideline, bro, it feels like my thumb is falling off the bone, like, like completely out of control. But, like, all these coaches and GMs and NFL scouts are saying, like, in the NFL, you got to be able to play through injuries. Like, everybody's playing through an injury. But, like, at the time, I didn't know this, but, like, I was just wired different. So, like, I knew that I had to finish this game. So, like, I went into the rest of the game playing with a um, torn owner bone in my ligament. But I still want MVP. So, like you said, like, people really don't know what we're going through on the outside. Like, they just think that we just giving up on a team or giving up on people. Like, nah, like, to be honest, like, every game, mostly every player is playing through an injury 
or banged up. Like, it's only the times where, like, you can't go, you can't physically go no more when we're stopping. But, like, most of the time we're all playing through injury. Right. So, yeah, I feel what you're saying. And significant yeah. ones yeah. like that. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Real like, talk. <laughs> P, I think you, I think you are a great example of someone who's not going to decide to play in the game, of taking a step right. back, looking at what they have in front of them, you know, taking the steps to properly increase their draft stock and going out there and proving right. it like a, like you did at the Senior Bowl. So I'm I'm not Good mad talk. at you. I doubt Senior Nation is. You, you've done right. well. You obviously have tremendously increased your gra- draft grade. So once right. again, I'm proud of you. Uh, we're going to let you go, but before we let you go, is there anything that you want to say to Sooner Nation? Anybody you want to shout out? Anything you want to leave the fans with? Most definitely. I, I just appreciate Sooner Nation for bringing me in with open arms and for two years showing me love that only my mama would show me. Um, y'all have brought me in. like I feel like I was a young boy coming in, and then I became a man through the University of Oklahoma. Like The things that happened in Oklahoma, I wouldn't change nothing. Yeah, I was highly recruited by other teams. Yeah, I know that they won a national championship. I would still win to this day, reverse time, and go to those teams knowing that I would be a national champion. Like, being at the University of Oklahoma, just the brotherhood and the camaraderie that I built with my brothers mean any, everything to me. So I just appreciate y'all boys for having me on the podcast. And if y'all at the spring game, I'll see y'all there. You feel yes, me? Sir. <laughs> you say, you, well, you know I'm going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you heard them here. On the podcast, on the Perry, Prairion yes. Winfrey, thank you, my man, for coming on. Most definitely. You already know. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moving on to our next segment of the podcast. But first, one more shout out to our guy, Perion. Thank you, Pete, for coming on to the podcast. Our next part of the show is something that was highly requested, the free game segment. Our free game segment, you know, last week we talked about uh, a little bit about our faith, um, what we see in successful people. Uh, this time on the podcast, we are going to talk about body language. So let me break it down to you, ladies and gentlemen. So I just had my pro day with the Panthers this past, uh, what's today? Tuesday? Mm-hmm. Yesterday, April 11th. Today's Tuesday, the 12th. I had my pro day with the Panthers, right? And so um, I mentioned to you last week, Braden, that my phone is off uh, for like the social media apps are cut off from 8 p.m. at night to 10 a.m. the next day. I had to be there at the facility by at by nine. I pulled up at like 820 just to make sure I was early. Right. So. So um, I walk in. uh, I check in. I say, hey, my name is Jay Hall. I, I get my my badge and everything. Uh, change clothes. They do measurements. So they measure my arms, measure my hands, take my weight and all that. Right. And so my phone's in my pocket, no notifications, no nothing. I'm not texting anybody that early in the morning. And so I walk into the cafeteria, right? Um, they're providing breakfast for us. Everybody's talking or on their phones. Like the guys are sitting there. So I went to go order an omelet and then I walked over to the coffee machine. Mind you, my phone is still silent in my pocket. And I see some of the staff from the Panthers talking. I don't know who they are, but I go over um, to make my coffee next to them. And I see them over there cracking jokes about the new coffee machine. So I said something about the coffee machine. And then they start talking to me. I start talking to them. And um, next thing you know, apparently I was talking to like one of the personnel guys, like the director of player personnel. He invites me to the back of his office. So I tell the uh, dude making my omelet, I'm like, yo, like, hold on to that. Put that in the back. Um, Keep it warm for me. I'll be right back. Right. So um, I grabbed one of my former teammates. His name is Donovan Spencer there. He is my former running back. And I'm like, hey, follow me real quick. Next thing you know, I got Donovan in the back with me uh, talking to two guys that work in player personnel. And we're just chopping it up, get to know each other. And then another uh, staff member walks in. We're talking to them. My phone's still in my pocket. My, my phone's still in my pocket. I'm attentive. I go back and get my food, and then I bring it back into the staff room with me. And then next thing you know, more players are coming in there like, yo, what y'all talking about? What's good? So I'm getting to know the staff. I'm getting to know the guys that are around me all because I wasn't, you know, 
on my phone and and and, and that type of deal. So um body language in terms of keeping your head up, right? Just being aware of your surroundings, smiling, talking to people. I remember I went to an FCA event, right? I think it was like two or three years ago. And the guy talked about just smiling when you walk into the building and saying hi. So I remember after that, I made it a, a point to make sure you remember Rose and Mr. Mm-hmm. Willie, the, the janitors. Yeah, right? so for sure. I, man, bro, I noticed even when I came back, I noticed that they were going because every time I walked in, I would say, um, I, don't. I, I, I would say, hey, just yeah, exactly. I, I would say, hey, so um, for Sooner Nation, for those of you who don't know, um, we had a we had a janitor named Mr. Willie, and um, no, I guess that's kind of a coincidence, but um, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, Mr. Um, Willie was the guy, though. Yeah, we had a uh, we had a you know two janitors, Mr. Willie and Rose. They were always around. I always made sure I, I spoke, and um, even when I was trying to become captain and just trying to be a good teammate, I always spoke to my teammates, even if they had their their head downs and their phones. So, um, how does this relate to body language, Jay Hall? Well. In this specific instance, when you ever walk, when you walk into your building, when you walk into your place of work, whether it be a school, whether it be, you know, wherever, keep your head up, get off your phone and, you know, walk walk with your head up straight and, you know, shoulders back and that type of thing and, and, and present yourself to others. You know, you can open your phone whenever you get to your locker room or whatever. But um, that was just an example of how body language you know influence my past weekend and influence my time in oklahoma so i'm no, ready sure you got any get, you got any two cents i know you got something to add i definitely have something to add uh on the topic of body language and you just you know just more for a game but on the topic of body language man like you said it's it's huge man i can't tell you how many opportunities have been you know, presented to me just because, like you said, I go in a room, I speak to everybody. Um, you know, I have a great demeanor about myself. I'm smiling. You know, I go shaking hands and everything. Literally, there was a guy that I got a uh, great knowledge from back at my high school when I had went back in the uh, the winter. I don't know why that slipped my brain, my brain, but during the winter, I had went back and you know he was out there with my coaches and. You know, I go speak to my coaches and, you know, a lot of people, if you don't know the person, they won't speak. But of course, he was with my coaches. And like I said, I speak to everybody. So I spoke to him, shook his hand, man. I got some I got some of the best financial advice I've ever got from him. He's a CEO. You know, you never just you never know who you're going to meet. It's crazy. And I got some of the best advice and some game from him. And I'll never forget it. Like some really, really good stuff just because walked over there had great body language shook his hand, then a conversation spawned from that. You know, it's like if you have great body language, you're automatically drawn to people. You know what I'm saying? Or people are drawn to you, I should say. You know, if you're sitting over there, like you said, head down or you have poor body language or you're not looking at anybody, people are not going to want to associate with you. Like we we were just saying the whole time, you might miss out on a great opportunity, maybe even a blessing. Yeah, I definitely can. Can, body can language is definitely important. So going back to I keep talking about the paralyzed man, bro, but it's one, it's it's a very quick and simple story. Two, I've mentioned in the last podcast, so our viewers should be familiar with it. Ladies and gentlemen, imagine if the paralyzed man had bad body language, right? How would he have ever met those four people that helped lift his mat? What if his entire life was just like, oh, woe is me? woe is me my 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 job sucks my life sucks you know the the athlete lifestyle is too much i'm tired how would he have ever met those friends right you know the the bible doesn't go in detail about how they met they just say like hey his his four friends well how did they become his friends you know i'm pretty sure they weren't just like hey like you look terrible today and he was just like yeah like i i doubt that's how it went but Ladies and gentlemen, body language, that, that, that is our thing today. So um, hopefully you can work on it this week. Um, impl- implement it. Um, go say hey to your janitors. Get to know the, the receptionists. You know, get to know the people around you. 
uh, mute your phone and your notifications for a little bit. And uh, I promise you it'll make your day just a little bit more productive. And you might even feel a little bit more better about yourself. So, And I have two other things, though. Oh, yeah. What you got? What you got? I got it. So a, a little bit more free game. You know what I'm saying? So my my free game comes from stuff I've learned in high school and also comes from these things called the Spartan rules. If you're not familiar with it, the Spartans, like I'm talking about like, you know, like back in like Greece, those type of Spartans, oh, okay. they had like All right. rules. I thought yeah, you were talking like, about a mascot. No, 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 no. I'm talking about like, you know, back in the day. Yeah. They had uh, 15 rules that they lived by. And it these rules kind of relate to how I lived my life throughout high school and to where I wanted to be. And so the first one we've already said on the podcast you know, before, it was the, the f- refuse to be a victim of circumstance and learn to be self-reliant and prepare for any situation. So obviously that speaks for itself. You know what I'm saying? It's just refuse to be a victim of circumstance. Everybody's going through something, you know, everybody has a bad situation or is, you know what I'm saying? Going through something it's not ideal for everybody. So, you know, you can sit up there and pout about it or you can go do something about it, okay? That's the first one. Then the second one is just find ways to incorporate being discomfort in your life. So being comfortable, being uncomfortable. And I know that's cliche, everybody says it, but man, it's so important. Because if you can find a way to, you know, be comfortable, being uncomfortable, the amount of things that you can achieve that you never would have thought, you know, is sky high. So those are my two little tidbits for um, this week. And, yep. you know, it's really I, everybody can use it. OK, but it's really generated towards, you know, some of the younger athletes, maybe that we have listening to it or parents that have younger athletes or kids or and stuff like that, you know, as adults, you may have heard this, you know what I'm saying? And maybe this won't apply to you. Maybe it will. You never know. But as a young athlete, these are some of the keys or really young anything. You don't have to be an athlete. You could be an artist or musician or whatever you are. These are some of the keys to just being successful. Like we said, some of the most successful people do the same things that every like successful people all do the same things. So. You know, these yeah. are some of the things that they do and uh, it'll help you. So real quick, the, just to touch on the being comfortable, being uncomfortable. Uh, just a few examples. Right. What does that look like? Be Willie. What does that look like? Jay Hall. Well, I'll tell you, if you are a young athlete, practice and ask questions from people who are older than you, people that are better than you. Right. That's mm-hmm. that's the biggest one as an athlete. If you are an adult. Right. What does that look like for you at work? Well. Go put yourself in meetings and go to events that you normally wouldn't go to. Ask your supervisor or a person ahead of you. Hey, can I hop in on this meeting real quick? Hey, can I can I see what you do on a day to day basis? Granted, it's not what you're used to. You may not even be allowed in the meeting, but at least you put yourself out there. At least you sold your your supervisor that you were willing to be like, hey, like I have interest in this. That's outside of my box. Hey, mm-hmm. go to this event. That's that's not something that I normally go to. But hey, like, let's just see if I can go learn something out of it. And then when you go to these events, have good body language. Take notes. Boom. Show Boom. interest. You know, when, when you go hang with these older kids that you're practicing with, ask questions. Hey, how do you do this? Don't just be a fly on the wall. Interact. Take advantage of these opportunities. So hopefully you've got something out of this. Body language body language and interaction you know those are those are two things that we talk ladies and gentlemen thank you for continuing to watch our podcast lastly please 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 pull up to the spring game like i like i said it before but i'm signing autographs i'm taking pictures after the spring game we are having a live podcast at rudy's at seven o'clock sometime this week we are going to uh send a survey out on twitter and see how many people are actually going to pull up so um, I'm, we're going to be selling merchandise. I'm going to be selling my gear. A whole bunch of stuff is going on. I don't even, we're going to have so much going on. I don't even know how much is, yeah. But uh, pull up. It'll be in your best interest. It'll be a good time. Uh, bring the kids with you. I'll sign stuff that, you, you know, if, if you want to bring something and all that type of deal. So uh, podcast on the prairie, live and in person at Rudy's off Highway 9.
Thank you, thank you, thank you for continuing to listen. Thank you for your support. That is all we have for this episode of the podcast on the Prairie. That is all I got, ladies and gentlemen. Peace. Yeah, it's perfect. Peace.